We continue today with chapter 15, The Holy Instant and the Laws of God. It is impossible to use one relationship at the expense of another and not to suffer guilt. And it is equally impossible to condemn part of a relationship and find peace within it. Under the Holy Spirit's teaching, all relationships are seen as total commitments, yet they do not conflict with one another in any way. Perfect faith in each one for its ability to satisfy you completely arises only from perfect faith in yourself. And this you cannot have while guilt remains. And there will be guilt as long as you accept the possibility and cherish it that you can make a brother into what he is not because you would have him so. You have so little faith in yourself because you are unwilling to accept the fact that perfect love is in you. And so you seek without for what you cannot find without. I offer you my perfect faith in you in place of all your doubts. But forget not that my faith must be perfect in, in all your brothers as it is in you, or it would be a limited gift to you. In the holy instant we share our faith in God's Son because we recognize together that He is wholly worthy of it, and in our appreciation of His worth we cannot doubt His Holiness, and so we love Him. All separation vanishes as Holiness is shared. For Holiness is power, and by sharing it, it gains in strength. If you seek for satisfaction in gratifying your needs as you perceive them, you must believe that strength comes from another, and what you gain he loses. Someone must always lose if you perceive yourself as weak. Yet there is another interpretation of relationship that transcends the concept of loss of power completely. You do not find it difficult to believe that when another calls on God for love, your call remains as strong. Nor do you think that when God answers him, your hope of answer is diminished. On the contrary, you are more inclined to regard his success as witness to the possibility of yours. That is because you recognize, however dimly, that God is an idea, and so your faith in him is strengthened by sharing. What you find difficult to accept is the fact that, like your father, you are an idea, and like him, you can give yourself completely, wholly, without loss and only with gain. Herein lies peace, for here there is no conflict. In the world of scarcity, love has no meaning, and peace is impossible. For gain and loss are both accepted, and so no one is aware that perfect love is in him. In the holy instant, you recognize the idea of love in you, and unite this idea with the mind that thought it and could not relinquish it. By holding it within itself, there is no loss. The holy instant thus becomes a lesson in how to hold all of your brothers in your mind, experiencing not loss, but completion. From this it follows you can only give. And this is love, for this alone is natural under the laws of God. In the holy instant, the laws of God prevail, and only they have meaning. The laws of this world cease to hold any meaning at all. When the Son of God accepts the laws of God as what He wills gladly, it is impossible that He be bound or limited in any way. In that instant, He is as free as God would have Him be. For the instant He refuses to be bound, He is not bound. In the holy instant, nothing happens that has not always been. Only the veil that has been drawn across reality is lifted. Nothing has changed, yet the awareness of changelessness comes swiftly as the veil of time is pushed aside. No one who has not yet experienced the lifting of the veil and felt himself drawn irresistibly into the light behind it 
can have faith in love without fear. Yet the Holy Spirit gives you this faith because he offered it to me and I accepted it. Fear not, the holy instant will be denied you, for I denied it not, and through me the Holy Spirit gives it unto you, as you will give it. Let no need you perceive obscure your need of this, for in the holy instant you will recognize the only need the sons of God share equally, and by this recognition you will join with me in offering what is needed. It is through us that peace will come. Join me in the idea of peace, for in ideas minds can communicate. If you would give yourself as your father gives his self, you will learn to understand selfhood. And there is love's meaning. Understood. But remember that understanding is of the mind and only of the mind. Knowledge is therefore of the mind and its conditions are in the mind with it. If you were not an idea, and nothing but an idea, you could not be in full communication with all that ever was. Yet, as long as you prefer to be something else, or would attempt to be something, be nothing else, and something else, together, you will not remember the language of communication, which you know perfectly. In the holy instant God is remembered, and the language of communication with all your brothers is remembered with him. For communication is remembered together, as is truth. There is no exclusion in the holy instant, because the past is gone, and with it goes the whole basis for exclusion. Without its source, exclusion vanishes. And this permits your source, and that of all your brothers, to replace it in your awareness. God and the power of God will take their rightful place in you, and you will experience the full communication of ideas. Through your ability to do this, you will learn what you must be, for you will begin to understand what your Creator is, and what His creation is, along with Him. And from the workbook, Lesson 120, for morning and evening review. I rest in God. I rest in God today and let Him work in me and through me, while I rest in Him in quiet and in perfect certainty. I am as God created me. I am God's Son. Today I lay aside all sick illusions of myself and let my Father tell me who I really am. On the hour, I rest in God. On the half hour, I am as God created me. Amen.